You know, the the difference between uh, 2016 and 2020 is that Hillary Clinton never quite reached ab- above a majority. She never reached above 50 percent in most battleground states. And so while she while she had a slight lead above Donald Trump in places like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and Michigan, um, w- without her actually going above 50 percent, it, 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 it always left the possibility uh, that, that, that she could fall below the finish line there. But what we see is, is Joe Biden really entering the final week of this election with a with a more commanding lead and a very, very different coalition. Yeah. Uh, it's very different from the Obama Biden coalition and even different from the coalition that, that Hillary Clinton uh, put together in 2016. Joe Biden is leading among mm-hmm. senior sitters, citizens, leading amongst white women. These are groups that Democrats typically do not uh, lead. And as and as he's begun to improve his margins, even amongst uh, men of color, which which I was concerned about for a little while there. But as as partisanship has settled in, and I think even as as, as black men and Latino men are, are confronted with the existential threat of, of Donald Trump, even they are beginning to, to fall in line here. And so I, I do think that Joe Biden is entering the final stretch in a very, very uh, safe position. So, Mitch, I want to talk a little bit about Florida specifically, because while we're seeing a huge surge in early voting, one of the biggest concerns that we're seeing uh, is the fact that perhaps election won't be called on Election Day specifically because of Florida. (laughs) As an expert in this case, I don't want to give you any flashbacks. Talk a little bit of what may have changed since (laughs) since when you were uh, when you were overseeing the elections in Florida and what can we uh, expect? Well, we all have bad memories of Florida, (laughs) which means things take a really long time. You know, Florida (laughs) likes to be number one no matter what it is, even if it's a bad thing. But I think the difference this time is the surge in early voting, because under Florida law, you can count the uh, the vote by mail, the absentees as they come in. That makes a big, big difference. And then with early voting, by the time you have 7 o'clock p.m. here uh, on election night for most of the state, the panhandle's in a different time zone, uh, you probably will have this time probably 75 or 80 percent of all the votes in. What's interesting, though, is you have to remember we're so close. Our elections in 2018, uh, Bill Nelson, the incumbent uh, senator, lost by one-tenth of one point. It used to be that one point either way would determine, the, you know, Florida, the biggest swing state in the country. Now it's one-tenth of a point. Even our governor's race, we lost by three-tenths of a point. So everything matters, but it's also made more difficult that the president's approval rating is 49-47, upside down for him at this moment. Uh, that's indicated that Biden's in play. Uh, Michael Bloomberg has come into the state to spend a lot of money on grassroots things. So I, I think we'll have it early. But this is Florida, so I presume absolutely nothing. Hey, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there for more AM Joy and the rest of MSNBC. And click on any of the videos right here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. And you can get more videos from MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.